16, Mass DOT seeks to perform resurfacing and realignment work on Route 116 in Hadley from the Route 9 intersection to the Hadley Amherst border. Portions of work will take place in the 100 foot buffer zone and bordering land subject to flooding. And who is here tonight to talk on this matter? Hey everybody, my name is Billy Lee. Um, I am the District Environmental Engineer with MassDOT. Let me just pull up my documents. Bear with me one minute. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Okay. And um, did you all receive the RDA ahead of time for this and have the opportunity to review it? Yeah, can you just give us a, like a quick summary of the project? Yes, I'm going to share a PowerPoint with you all. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, this project is resurfacing um, and related work on Route 116 in Hadley and Amherst, but obviously tonight we will just be talking about the Hadley portion. Um, I am joined by our designer, Justin Burbo, um, who can answer any design specific questions um, once I get to the end of my presentation. So um, this is just a high level locus map to show you um, the Hadley portion of the project. It essentially extends from the Amherst Hadley border down to the intersection with Route 9. Um, basically, the project need is because there is deteriorated pavement, um, you know, this roadway is very rutted in some areas. Um, so we wanted to do a resurfacing project here. Um, and I know there were a lot of questions at the last meeting about the need for um, the realignment. So. I just wanted to give you guys um, more context after talking to our um, design section. So essentially the purpose of the realignment is to slow traffic entering from Route 116 to Route 9 westbound and improve sight lines to create a safer way for people like in this photo, this guy in the red shirt and red hat, um, to, to get across the off ramp. Um, the intersection with Route 116 and 9 is the only intersection on Route 9 that has a freeway type acceleration lane, which is out of character for this corridor. Pedestrian and bike crossings at an acceleration lane is not a good situation because of the higher speeds and because entering drivers are often looking backwards for gaps in traffic. All other intersections along Route 9 have a stop condition or a full traffic signal instead of an acceleration lane. A traffic analysis was done by D2 Traffic to make sure the new configuration would not create a lengthy backup for 116 southbound. Um, of course, 116 traffic going westbound to Route 9 will be slowed compared to the existing condition, but that is the intent in order to improve bicycle and pedestrian safety. A future project is planned to construct a sidewalk along the north side of Route 9 from McDonald to Campus Plaza Road. Um, so that's just kind of some language from our design group as to why um, the intersection was included in this project. Um, so this is just a summary of the scope of work. All this language is what's in the RDA. Um, so we have milling and resurfacing of Route 116 in Hadley and Amherst, but we're only talking about Hadley tonight. Um, that includes adjusting and rebuilding of drainage structures, cleaning of drainage structures and paved waterways. Uh, it also includes guardrail, sorry, <laughs> Upgrades to guardrail, removal of built up material on the roadway shoulders to restore country drainage, and the use of milling mulch to adjust those shoulders. Um, there will be no increase in the roadway elevation in areas that are bordering land subject to flooding. So that means, you know, where we are milling, um, say two and a half inches, we are paving two and a half inches. So the surface elevation will be unchanged, and therefore there is no need for compensatory storage. Um, so all of that work is exempt in the Wetlands Protection Act, and I will get to the provisions um, in a little bit. Um, the, real, the realignment of the existing acceleration lane at Route 9 on the westbound on-ramp um, will include the removal of the existing acceleration lane and the construction of a new slow speed yield entrance using full depth reconstruction. The full depth reconstruction will consist of grading and placement of new roadbed material and installation of new asphalt. Um, it will include the installation. Sorry, did somebody say something? No, you're good. No. Okay. 
Um, it will include the installation of several catch basins um, and drain manholes that will tie into the existing drain system. There will be no conversion of vegetated surface within the 100 foot buffer zone to impervious surface. Um, actually, what will happen is there will be approximately 750 square feet of impervious cover converted back to vegetated surface at the completion of the project. Um, so just to go into a little bit more detail so you guys can visualize, um, there are two stream crossing, there are three stream crossings across the whole project, two of which are in Hadley. Um, one of them is an unnamed intermittent stream and the other one is one of the Mill River crossings. Um, I know this was something that came up at our last meeting. Um, you guys were concerned about sedimentation and control barriers. I do just want to, you know, say that the nature of milling and paving work does not kick up as much sediment as, you know, like a traditional construction project where there would be excavation and, and ground disturbance. Um, but we are just, you know, keeping in mind that you guys were concerned about the erosion sediment controls. So we've included um, erosion sediment controls for the areas where there is um, a river or a stream crossing under. Um, so this is just kind of a schematic so you guys can visualize where that um, proposed erosion sediment control will go between the roadway and then the um, road stream crossing or road river crossing. Um, and then this is um, an item that will be included in the contract. The H01016, um, that is a bridge code that MassDOT uses. So that's how the contractors will know, okay, this bridge or culvert crossing, whatever, um, will will require um, erosion sediment controls at that crossing. Um, this is a schematic just so you guys can visualize um, the realignment. As you can see, there's the proposed sediment control barrier. Um, I sent Kayla after our last meeting this the standard language for our special provision that outlines um, proposed sediment control barriers. You know, to summarize it all, it essentially says um, to use compost filter socks um, or you know other erosion sediment controls as approved by the engineer. Um, and then you can kind of see this double cross hatching and diagonal cross hatching. Um, and then the green line is the 100 foot buffer zone. So that double crossed hatching represents the 765 square feet within the 100 foot buffer zone that are that is proposed to be converted from impervious to pervious cover. Um, and then the diagonal hatching shows 593 square feet within the 100 foot buffer proposed to remain impervious cover as roadway surface. Um, and those, you know, are approximate numbers. Um, and so that that is within the buffer zone, but I'll get to my next slide as to why that is exempt. Um, so the provisions for exemption in the Wetlands Protection Act are um, section 10.02 2B1 and 2B2, which discuss minor activities in the buffer zone and riverfront area. Um, so the first one, um, would be the conversion of impervious to vegetated surfaces provided erosion and sedimentation controls are implemented during construction. So that would cover the realignment. And then the second provision would be uh, pavement repair, resurfacing and reclamation of existing roadways within the right of way configuration provided that the roadway and shoulders are not widened. No staging or stockpiling of materials. All disturbed road shoulders are stabilized within 72 hours of completion of the resurfacing or reclamation and no work on the drainage system is performed other than adjustments and or repairs to respective structures structures within the roadway. Um, so that is kind of exempt, showing that the, the resurfacing work for the rest of the project is exempt. Um, so I know it's speaking really fast, but just trying to <laughs> save everybody some time since this is the second time we're talking about this. Um, are there any questions? Does anybody want me to kind of go back to any of the visual schematics to discuss any part of this project? I just got a question. What's the difference between an accelerated ramp and uh, the other, what you're calling it? Uh, the slow speed yield. I can't really speak to that because I'm not a traffic engineer. I'm an environmental engineer. Um, Justin, I don't know if you have any context for the difference between those two. Oh, you're on mute, Justin. Sorry. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, now we can okay. hear you. 
Can you go back to the schematic that this one here? Yes. Yeah. So, as you can see, the the existing ramp, which is the ramp that's further to the north, is designed for a high speed merge from Route 116 to Route 9. Now, part of having that high speed ramp is having a large opening because uh, you know the vehicle merging from Route 116 onto Route 9, because they're traveling at a, at a higher speed, it takes them longer to merge. It, it more they need more length along Route 9 to merge onto Route 9. So it doesn't, it doesn't show the uh, extent of the opening on this schematic, but in the bottom left, you can start to see where the ramp <clears throat> from 116 opens onto Route 9. So th that's the big issue that we're trying to avoid is, is we're trying to shorten that length. Uh, and if you look at the proposed ramp, you can see that, you know, the distance that someone would have to travel to cross uh, the ramp is, is much shorter. So I mean, the big difference is the speed the vehicles are going to be traveling um, and then the length of the opening along Route 9. When the when the cars do get the route down on the proposed ramp, is there a stop or a yield sign or or, is there, or there's not a stop light there, correct? I don't see it. No, no, there's no stop stop light. There will be a stop sign. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. So the traffic. Yeah, and the traffic the traffic signals aren't included on this schematic because this is really just to represent the impacts on the wetlands um, from this new roadway design. Yeah. All right. Now, I, I just got a quick question, and, I, and this, this has nothing to do with my decision. I mean, I think this is all great. Um, that where it says remove existing pavement, how, how much square footage of blacktop are you guys eliminating and putting back to, uh, back to one, you know, basically grass area? Okay, so. Do you have a ballpark? This, yeah, so if you look in this top left corner, um, well, actually, I mean, we have the calculation for within the buffer zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you're talking well, thousands of square feet here that, that you're, you're actually going to make it back, put yeah. it back to grass. Well, if, if they want to do I, the, I love it. If they want to do the sidewalk deal, there's no way they could put a sidewalk across that right now. Right. It's just impossible. Right. So, by realigning with the proposed ramp, they're going to be able to yep. accomplish that yep. in the future as no, well. Yeah. Well, so, this is all for bikes. Bicycles and walkers have nothing to do with, with road, you know, has everything to do with... Well, they are oh, well, it's, it's, safety. 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 it's a safety issue. When yeah. the cars are trying to merge onto Route 9, they're looking to their left, and they, they always can't see if somebody's walking right. on the... On the, and the, they, they, the guy, they showed a person there. Yeah, if you got the guy on the right-hand side, they're on the red. Um, well, maybe the guy shouldn't be out, should be on one of the bicycle paths and not in the middle of the road either. But that's... Um, well, I think there's a sidewalk obviously. on the other side of the street. You obviously have a, a, a big problem with this thing. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Uh, it's it, my tax dollars too. You know what I'm saying. But that's beyond our. I, it is. I understand. We that. can't. I get it. We can't. I get it. I mean, I'll, I'll let them answer. You know, answer your question, but right. it's really beyond our, our purview. It is. It is. I just. It seems like a waste of money to me. Bottom line. Yeah. Actually, it's going to save money because they're not going to pave as much. They're going to take up all that black top. Right. They're, they're going to resurface it one way or the other. Yep. Anyways. Yep. Yep. No. I will look for a motion to close the hearing. Have we? Do we have to approve all this, or are we all set? Well, we're going to close the hearing. Okay. Then we're gonna I make a motion to close the hearing. And we have a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well, we have to issue a, a negative or positive determination. That's what I'm going to go okay. to next. Yeah. Okay. So we close the hearing, but now we're going to go to the RDA. So I got to look at the language here. I would say it's a negative determination. Um, two. two or three, I'm just reading the third one here. I think it wouldn't be three because it's also in um, land subject to flooding. It's not just buffer zone. Well, they, they, I think it's three. Oh. They, they, they talked about they were going to be working in that area, the roadway, but they're only taking it down two and a half inches and bringing it back. Right, so then that's <coughs> not buffer, that's in bordering and then subject to, I guess it could be both. Mm -hmm. so, okay, 
Is bordering land subject to flooding is an area that's subject to jurisdiction to the act, and buffer zone is something else. So I guess it could be two and okay, three. Okay, it works two Oh, uh, right. Yeah, I think, well. Okay. I think it might, it could be both maybe? I'm trying to see what the difference is. I'm, I'm reading the word in here. Let me do a second. We're trying to do the custom of the Okay. We're in the buffer zone. I'm thinking it's a three because they are working within the buffer zone. And also within an area that's subject to jurisdiction, like bordering land subject to flooding. So I don't know, can you do both? Yes, you can You can choose multiple. You can? I've never yes. done that before. Yes. Like yeah, I've spoken to Mark Stinson about it. You can choose multiple. So I'm going to propose, uh, look for a, uh, a motion to do a negative determination two and three. Two is the work described in the request is within an area subject to jurisdiction under the act, but will not remove, fill, dredge, or alter that area. Therefore, said work does not require the following of a notice of intent. A three is the work described in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the regulations, but will not alter an area subject to jurisdiction under the act. Therefore, said work does not require the following of a notice of intent, subject to any of the following conditions. So we, you know, already in the plan, they already have all the erosion controls in place, so we don't need to add anything for that. Right. I think the okay. only thing to add would be maybe to not have any construction equipment parked in that area, especially next to the buffer zone. Okay. You're talking like overnight? Mm -hmm. Oh, just in general. Just in general. I mean, even, even the spot that they're moving and putting back to. As long as they're outside the buffer zone. The only place right, but I'm just saying as far as, you know, you got oil, you got hydraulic oil, you got stuff leaking, whatnot, you don't want any of that stuff to be... Okay. Taking up residents in that area, I would say. Okay, so. So special condition that no parked equipment in the buffer zone or land subject to flooding. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. And also, can I propose a condition that the applicant must provide the contact information of the environmental engineer prior to the start of construction, so we have contact information for. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And we should also add that, that we should be notified before work commences, so we can check all the erosion control areas in our place and proper. Mm -hmm. Okay. So special condition that once erosion and sedimentation controls are installed. The Conservation Commission should be notified. And that's stuff we can add underneath three. Yeah. Where we can't with two. Yep. You could add, you could add it wherever it Either just or doesn't it doesn't Yeah. Yeah. Because it's following conditions. Yeah. Okay. So it's we have we, we have a basically a motion made. We've all kind of added to it. Yeah. I will look for a second to that request. Second. But who's making the motion? Oh, uh, I make a motion for negative determination uh, two and three. Uh, with with the conditions that we with, with the conditions that we laid out. I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, all four? Abandoned? Yep. Okay. So we're all set. We just need some signatures. Okay, let's yep. And Billy, okay. I will send this to whoever, the address that's listed on the application, and I'll send you a digital copy as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, the 811 North King Street address is great. You can put like attention, Billy Lee. Um, and then it'll go to my mailbox. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time and consideration on this project. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, you too. Bye-bye. Um, other business? Yes, I think Kristen McDonough from SWCA is here to give an update on... UMass Journal Maintenance Annual Update, file yeah. number 170-266. You're on. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Kristen McDonough with SWCA Environmental Consultants, and I'm here just to give the commission a very brief overview on the UMass, uh, University of Massachusetts, or UMass annual 2023 operation and maintenance report. Um, I can, uh, Kayla, I'm not sure if I'm sharing my screen or if your tech person is running a slideshow that I sent you earlier. Um, if you, can you try sharing your screen to see if it works? Yep. Can you guys see my screen? Yep, looks good. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, let's just jump right in here. Um, so, 
UMass filed a comprehensive or bundled notice of intent in 2019 um, for routine operation and maintenance on campus. They filed one in Amherst and one in Hadley. Uh, the one in Hadley is DEP file number 170-266. Um, because it was a comprehensive or bundled NOI, it's, it has an order of conditions that are valid for five years. And with the COVID tolling extension, I believe this actually expires in 2025. Um, I can get you an exact date. I think it's July, but uh, either way, it's not five years from 2019. It's a little bit extended. Uh, the purpose of the bundled NOI was to streamline um, permitting and correspondence between both the Amherst and Hadley Conservation Commissions and the University of Massachusetts. And the beauty of the bundled NOI was that um, for each town, uh, uh, it, this permit absorbed all other ongoing conditions in other open permits. So UMass closed out, I think, um, six open permits in Hadley and maybe six in Amherst and got certificates of compliance for all of those. Some of them were pretty old. I want to say one of them was as old as 1989. Um, and then bundled all ongoing permit conditions into this one standalone document. Um, so there are quite a number of conditions within this order of condition. Uh, but one of the conditions is to provide annual reporting to the Hadley Conservation Commission by December 31st of each year, just kind of summarizing the O&M work. The permit has three categories. Category one is work that's pretty much exempt and does not require any prior notice given to the commission before the work commences. Category two is work that is pretty minor buffer zone type stuff, but still does require prior notice given to the commission. And category three is work that's anticipated to require either administrative approval or a new permit. Um, in 2023, UMass completed regular O&M work like cleaning catch basins in Hadley, um, stormwater management facility inspections and reporting. There wasn't really much too significant going on in Hadley that's this past year. But we also included in the report a couple of known upcoming projects just to give you a heads up on stuff that's going to be coming up in 2024-2025. Um, the first thing that occurred is the bridge maintenance at parking lot 11. And this was something that fell under category two of the uh, order of conditions. And that was work that required prior notice but not prior review. Uh, or like additional permitting in other words. Um, UMass notified the commission in February of 2022 that the wooden deck, which is just on the top of this bridge, uh, was in need of being replaced. It was closed to pedestrian traffic due to safety concerns. Um, there were no well under stream alterations and the deck was replaced in the fall of 2023 by mm -hmm. students. Uh, this is the biggest thing that happened on campus in 2023, I think. Um, this is the North Village Apartments conduit upgrades and stream restoration. And this was eventually filed as a separate NOI, but it should have been, it would have been qualified as a category two under this permit. Um, this is a gravel road right here. This is the town line. This is Amherst up here, and this is Hadley down here. So this is right on the town line. Uh, UMass was installing some underground conduit and upgrading utilities through this existing gravel road, which as I said, would have been a category two requiring prior notice to the commission as it is in riverfront and buffer zone and the 35 foot buffer zone, which is jurisdictional under the Hadley bylaw. There were no direct wetland uh, alterations in Hadley. However, the contractors replaced a culvert in Amherst in kind, and they did a pretty poor job of it. So the Amherst, uh, agent issued an enforcement order and UMass SWCA, the previous Hadley agent and the Amherst agent all met and decided in I think September of 2022 that UMass was going to need to require uh, an after the fact notice of intent and mitigation offerings. Um, so this is a separate NOI, but we're including it in this presentation just because it, it could have been followed under this existing orders. Um, just to give you a quick summary of what's going on out there, if you're interested in that, um, this stream right here flows through a 60 inch culvert in Hadley. And one of the mitigation um, pieces that were offered as part of that after the fact NOI was that this would be, this section of the stream where it takes a really hard right angle turn would be uh, restored as there was active erosion. 
There were also two other little culverts in Hadley that were supposed to be upgraded and an old agricultural building within Riverfront that was demolished and removed from the, from the site. Uh, just as an update to the commission on this, um, you can see this blue line is the stream bank right here and here. And you can see right here, the stream gets really pinched right at the town line. Um, this work has been completed. The step pools in Hadley are done. They look great. The step pools in Amherst are done. They look great. But after all the significant rain events we had in 2023 and even January of 2024, this pinch point in the stream right here has just completely blown out. The stream is attempting to find its equilibrium. It's carving out a new floodplain and it's carving it out to the east, which is undercutting the road, jeopardizing the new infrastructure. Um, so UMass did just file an emergency certification in Amherst to repair this section of stream bank. And they're expecting to ratify that tomorrow night in Amherst. So just as an update to the commission, that's hot off the press. That wasn't even in the report. But I'm happy to talk about that more at the end if you have questions about that. Um, here are just some photos. This is me standing on top of the 60 inch culvert in Hadley, just to go back here. I'm standing right here, facing downstream. And this is showing the completed stream restoration. It looks great. This is after a significant rain event. The, the step pools are holding up. Um, and this was, this was six inches of rain in one week. This is facing east towards the 60 inch culvert outlet. Again, showing a significant rain event. That stream is just screaming. I don't know what the cubic feet per second are, but it's really high. And it's actually holding up and functioning well, uh, which is great. Uh, what else? Uh, these are the other two culverts in Hadley um, that were upgraded as part of mitigation. This is that gravel road, North Village Drive. Um, this is a culvert upgrade outlet in an intermittent stream. This is a culvert upgrade uh, at just BBW. Um, UMass also is required to conduct at least annual stormwater inspections at all of their stormwater facilities, as well as provide the commission with updated spatial data as new stormwater facilities are created and mapped on campus. Um, this black line is the town line. So this is all Amherst over here and this is Hadley. So all these red dots and green polygons in Hadley are stormwater facilities such as detention basins, um, sediment four bays, rain gardens, vegetated swales, that kind of thing. Um, uh, we created a survey 123 data form to be completed using ArcGIS online at every uh, stormwater facility on campus and a copy of each one of these reports is included in the report. Um, I don't, I want to say there might be 70 in Hadley, but here's just, just a gross example of what one of those inspection reports look like. You know, it has the stormwater ID, what type it is, this one's a detention basin. Uh, what special condition and BEP file number it references to, inspector qualifications, um, existing conditions, notes, and then if there are any recommendations for improvement, and then a photo page. And I'm not going to go through all of them because there are 300 pages of those reports, but they're in the report. Anybody wants to reference any specific stormwater facility inspection? I'd like to look at all of them. No, I'm sure. just, no, just kidding. No. Oh, well, they're in there. No, keep going, keep going. No, I'm just joking. Okay, and then um, just some future projects to look forward to for you guys. So I know that I met Kayla um, last summer with Mark Stinson um, out at the NDMAS, out at the site of the new Wets building, and that will be likely a notice of intent for redevelopment in the riverfront area. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, UMass is going to be conducting MS4 dry weather sampling. That probably doesn't need to go to the commission, but I'll double check and make sure that's not gonna be a prior notice, but I don't think it will. Um, the pond dredge is likely gonna be 2026, but there are several other side projects associated and kind of all bundled into that pond dredge, including this photo, which is erosion associated with the Tanbrook overflow along Commonwealth Avenue. This is Boyden Field. And like, it's hard to explain, but the Tanbrook Inlet at the visitor center, right at just north of um, Fearing Street in Amherst has this double barrel culvert and some blockage occurred at the main culvert inlet and there's another storm culvert overflow and water was diverted to the overflow, which dumps out at Wayden Field and created all this erosion. 
Um, so that's going to be a restoration project, possibly a stream daylighting project. I'm not sure who's doing the design yet, but that will probably be another NOI. Geothermal wells, I imagine that's going to occur in Hadley. I'm not sure if it's also going to occur in Amherst. So stay tuned for some upcoming stuff. Um, and we'll, we'll let you know if it's going to need a new notice of intent or if it will qualify under this existing um, O&M order of conditions. But our interpretation of the existing 2019 bundled NOI is that it's for routine O&M stuff. So if it's really going to be something that requires engineering plans, it'll probably be a new permit. And that's all I have, but um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But I do want to answer any questions if anyone has any questions about this. Anybody in the board? I'm no, fine. Very no, sure. thank very you very much for, you. for your presentation. Very nice. Very good presentation. Thank you. Well, if we have new spatial data, such as, you know, new wetlands that have been delineated or new stormwater facilities, we'll present that in person next year. So I know that old agent, Jana Stone, was a GIS person, so she was really interested in getting shape files, up-to-date shape files. So just let us know if we can get you any of that stuff um, in the interim. All right, no problem. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for everything. Thank you. Okay, so we have some other things on the agenda here, but uh, Paul, are you here for something, uh, other business? Uh, you're, you're muted, Paul. There you go. Here you go. Um, I just wanted to make sure you folks got the report that I dropped off. And I don't know if you've had a chance to review it um, mm -hmm. in, in reference to my property in uh, 243, the Green Garden. I was kind of under the impression that that was going to be brought up at this meeting, but it doesn't look like it probably is. Yeah, Paul, so I'm still waiting to hear from Steve about the drainage. So there's no updates um, from our end. I did, well, I haven't distributed it to the commission yet, but Paul had dropped off some files when he got his drainage okay. study done with wetlands delineated showing where all the catch basins are in the proximity to the wetlands. And it shows the neighboring property as well. I just wanted to, I figured Paul had something, up, up, I didn't want to have you go through all the other boring stuff yeah. we have left on the agenda if we could take care of you early in the meeting. So. Well, I appreciate that, but no, I was just, uh, like I say, I was, kind of under the impression it was going to be brought up at this meeting, but that's okay. I, I, I dropped off the uh, uh, wetlands uh, reports and my permit and uh, drawings and stuff by Berkshire Design um, to, to assist you folks um, with your determination when uh, that finally comes to uh, present it to you, that's all. It's just more information for you folks to, to help you do your job. So is this, are we going to be having a hearing on this? We don't have any application in yet for the project, so, okay, we, so. we can't make any decisions yet. Okay, so well, keep me posted. That's all. Oh, our, ne our, our next meeting is scheduled for February thirteenth, I believe, second yeah. Tuesday in February. And you okay. can you can check with us uh, in advance if we have you on the agenda with Kayla. Okay. February thirteenth. Check check with her. Or, you know, probably a week in advance, ten days. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. And Thank any, you. anybody Thank else. You. Okay. You're welcome, Paul. Anybody else in the audience that has any concerns or they want to bring up Dave? I don't know who David and Nate is. Hi, how are you? Yes. Hi, um, this is David. My father's Nate. Okay. Uh, I'll put a video on. Um, I believe my father talked to Kayla a little bit about a property on Huntington Road um, that my, my mother is a part owner in. Um, it's somewhere near 54 Huntington Road. They have the ID number of 2281. And- Do you want me to pull it up on know, screen share really quick? Me or you? Do you want me to pull it up on the map really yeah, quick? Yeah, please, go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. I believe is it this one right here yeah that one right there so a little bit of quick history is um it used to belong to my uncle uh, Mark Mbala and yeah, Nancy Paula um and then of course my mother you know since he, he passed my mother ended up being part owner of this thing with uh, I think 23 other individuals and we're looking at 
the piece of property and then of course we got to get rid of it at some point because it's pointless to keep between that many individuals and we know that the town has been taxing it as a buildable lot but we're just curious you know would it be considered one and you know i guess the main question is like you know could you guys provide a little bit of insight to us you know if you think it might be not and i understand that any discussions would be super high level and you know informal my my thoughts are i will tell the board and check he's probably going to have to hire an environmental scientist to do a, yep. a survey of the property to see what is wet i know there's a lot of wetlands out there in some cases yeah so what yep. is wet what's not and depending on how much is delineated wetlands is, is going to determine what is left for if there is a buildable envelope yeah uh, if all that green area is shown is all wetlands i would say probably not yeah you got to get access somewhere you have to cross it right and uh but we can't give you a definitive answer i mean yes you're gonna have to hire somebody to to look at it and, and determine that for you but we can't determine that for you unfortunately yeah yeah um you know in terms of you know what are some of the um, buffer is it like a hundred foot buffer that we have to deal with outside of those yes the delineated we don't allow any work within the 35 foot buffer zone of the hundred so we yeah. do allow work between 35 and 100 feet in the buffer zone depending what that is but yeah. definitely 35 feet is a do not disturb touch outside of the existing wetland buffer zone yeah i mean the wetland delineation in the buffer yeah. zone gotcha so um okay and that, um, i'm sure you know some some, some members may consider the property have a lot of value because they think it's buildable but this will determine the value of the property if it's, if it's buildable or not by having it basically uh, delineated the wetlands and uh yeah and then yeah. determine if there's a buildable spot on the property yeah yeah because i know the town has considered it buildable for it we've been taxed at it for a of years but you know what's happened in the past i can't we can't do anything about that um so 35 to 100 um and we're allowed are we allowed to have like one crossing across that a wetland you're allowed to cross up to disturb up to 5,000 square feet of wetlands with replication yeah. for a crossing but your, your limited project allows only 5,000 square feet to access upland for a buildable lot okay so possibly you can come up the left hand side of the property with a driveway I don't know if it's big enough there for a building lot on the on the left but maybe cross the narrow section of the wetlands in, in the back right hand corner but yeah I don't know the, the amount of acreage involved in the dimensions yeah 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 I'm, I'm, gu I'm guessing left side is about an acre and right side is about an acre i believe it's about four and a half total yeah um yeah so that's where we're sitting and so i know that if you look in the lower left corner where it close to the street i mean according to the map it looks like about 65 feet uh from the you know whatever the edge is right there can we run a driveway through there no nope, go up a little bit higher right go up about a quarter inch Right, right, right about there. Right there. Yeah. We run a driveway through there, given uh, the bot, like, you know, how hard we have to be off a property line, or? That's, you, I think, a planning board question, right? That's a, yeah. You're going to have to get a, okay. a land use specialist involved in this one. Yeah. Um, that's okay. beyond our, our purview. All right. Okay. Any questions, Dan? All right. Okay, I mean, at least we had you know, a little bit of an idea from the 35 and 100 foot, and um, so that is, we didn't know that. Um, so then I guess we'll continue from there. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. Is there anybody else in the audience? Uh, on I don't think so. Oh, like, oh one other question. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, can we drill you know underneath the wetlands if you wanted to put a septic on one side and the house on the other uh, <laughs> that's a crossing you're, you're disturbing wetlands again so um, even if you drill down underneath you're, 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 you're going through the wetlands that's the subsoil okay with a pipe don't what you probably could do that is incorporate that with a driveway for a crossing yeah okay all right. I could think they could do it. Because they're going to excavate for the driveway. Yep. Mm -hmm. They could put the pipe 
in part underneath the driveway going from the house and that's where the water service is going to go to yeah. water service too yes yeah. okay yeah. okay all right thanks okay and we have anybody else in the audience are they still there um okay that's it. So let's go on with the rest of other business. Okay, other business. So I submitted the fiscal year 25 um, budget request. It's basically the same. I just increased the dues budget by a little bit because MACC dues have went up. Mm -hmm. And everything else is, is the same. Um, but if there was anything that you wanted me to add or change, then, I, then there's still time to make adjustments to it. So fiscal 2024 voting approves it with the amount that you're asking for, for 2025. It's yeah, it's just fifty dollars more. Okay, I I, I Steve, I don't have any problems with all that numbers. So yeah, um, all the board members in agreement with the budget that's proposed. I'm not yes. going to promotion. Yep. I'm just going to Brandon. Yes. Yes. Ray. Yes. 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 And Gary. Yeah. So we're all in agreement with the budget request. Updating bylaws and regulations, tree removal policy? Yeah, so one thing I've been researching is there's a few communities who have a tree removal policy that sets certain standards for um, how many trees you, someone proposes to remove that requires an RDA versus an NOI based on like if they're considered hazardous or if they're in the buffer zone, how far away they're from wetlands. And it also some of them provide administrative approval for like hazardous trees that are, you know, proposing propose, proposing an imminent threat to property or people so I was wondering if that's something that you would be interested in exploring and I can like draft a policy and also it will help us you know hold people to the same standards so that when people are moving trees we can look at a document that says ha has numbers and like people we can treat people the same mm -hmm. and you know we haven't had much problems in the past but so you kind of just use common sense yeah. and yeah, you know what I mean, kind of like right. so that. How's the board feel about it? We can look into it. I mean, I don't know if it's something we need to adopt. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean? You've already gone gone and talked with other towns, or yeah. Well, I printed out. So I, South Hadley has regulations for it. East Hampton has a policy, and it's not really. It's just adopted within the minutes of like a meeting. It's not like a bylaw or official regulations. Yeah. I mean, it's official if we adopt it within the minutes of a meeting. But um, let's see. What, it basically like they have different formats, but they will say. They'll have mitigation requirements based on like the size of the tree. So if you're removing like a few smaller trees, it's not going to have as strict as a standard as if you're removing a bunch of large trees. And especially, and it also takes into account if they're in a wetland or if they're just in the buffer zone. Um, what else? Let's see. There's exemptions or like waivers. And well, I was just thinking um, if we wanted to implement like an administrative approval policy for situations where somebody wants to remove you know, just a few trees in a buffer zone so they don't have to go through the process of doing an RDA and posting a legal notice. Um, but it's up to you guys what you want to if, do. If that would, you know, I don't want to make it more restrictive. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. How many pages are there from that? That's South Hadley? Oh, no, these are, these are a few. Trees? Most of them are about like two or three pages. Um, yeah, this is and South it's just Hadley. guidelines? It's just guidelines. They, they, so it's nothing that's set in stone. So if we adopted that, we don't have to. Um, it's like a policy. So it's something that it's just kind of guiding you and making decisions. And it ideally, it would streamline the process. Because if there's a tree and somebody is like, I want to remove this, and I think it's going to fall on my property, they don't have to you know, post for it. We can like, I understand that. That, that, that makes sense. Okay, and that, makes it, yeah. that makes it easier yeah. and more yeah. approachable. If it's going to make it more approachable, yeah. Okay. 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 So I can... I can um, Email you these. Oh, and nice. Yeah. Could you send those documents out? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'll create like some sort of draft that we can start working on, and you know. Okay. Okay. We work slowly on it, see where it goes. If it doesn't work for us, then we tried it. You know. Right. All right. Anything else on the bylaws and regulations? Just those. No. Okay. okay. Bills. Bills. I don't have any bills. Okay. Updates. Mass DEP wetland regulation updates. Yes. Yeah, so Mass DEP is proposing some updates to the Wetland Protection Act regulations. Most of it involves the um, coastal regulations, but there are some updates to the stormwater standards that will basically just involve um, 
replacing outdated precipitation data with new data. They're requiring systems to handle, be able to handle more extreme precipitation events. Um, and also I think the TSS removal rate that's required is gonna go from 80% to 90% um, is one of the proposed changes. And just generally aligning with EPA's requirements for stormwater management, incentivize the use of nature and ecological processes to handle stormwater runoff. Um, and that's it. So they have a draft of the updates to the regulations online. I have I sent a summary, I think. Did I email the summary of it? I don't or know. No? I don't think so. Okay. I if not, I can definitely send the summary. Um, and they're, they are hosting some info sessions. So there's an info session happening on January 18th at 1 p.m. and at 6 p.m. and then January 23rd at 1 p.m. And they'll just give it an overview of what changes they're proposing. Um, and they're having public hearings for comment on January 31st at 1 p.m., January 31st at 6 p.m., February 1st at 1 p.m. And they're accepting written comments until March 1st at 5 p.m. So I will send more information as it comes through. If you want me to register you for any of those info sessions or public hearings, um, let me know. And I can send you the Zoom information. I got this information through MSMCP and MACC. They're hosting all these um, sessions along with DEP. Okay. Upcoming learning opportunities. So besides those info sessions, MACC is holding a conservation restriction monitoring workshop tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. if ever anybody's free and wants to join. This guy's full. Yeah, it's better. I got another beat tomorrow night and another one on Thursday. Okay. And December minutes. Um, I have December minutes. I think since you weren't here. Um, I I, I'm just going to say, that okay. if, if everyone was Give it to looks at, look at it, I would look for someone to make a motion in a second on the minutes and all three of you could vote on it. I will have to abstain because I wasn't present in December. Yeah, I make a motion to uh, approve the. Uh, Ray makes a motion. A second. Minutes of the de December 12th meeting. I'll oh. second it. Second by Brandon. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ray, <coughs> Steve, Aye. I abstain. And once we have anything else to discuss, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Steve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.